We finally have it. Specs, performance, pricing, and availability for AMD's next GPU. Let's just say you may actually be able to buy one. But before I get to that, Nvidia has a major quality control issue and the 5060 Ti benchmarks just leaked. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Nvidia's quality control looks to have taken a serious nosedive with their newest 50 series GPUs. I mean, we're talking missing ROPs in multiple GPU lineups, more and more melting connectors, to which I've got another surprise one here in a minute, but essentially things are not looking good for Team Green, especially because we now have reports of a damaged capacitor. As you can see right down here it says, according to a Reddit thread, it looks like one of the RTX 5090 tough graphics cards from ASUS suffered from a strange issue. Apparently one of the capacitors had popped. Yeah, the capacitor had popped. That one's pretty wild. Now, as they state here, the good news is that the card still works, which is definitely surprising, but there is a negative. It states that it's no longer a pleasure to use. You can see it says this Redditor says that he noticed increased noise even when doing something as simple as watching Netflix. And when we go down here, you can see that the cap is effectively missing. It says that yes, the back of all GPU cards of the 5090 have it, but in reference photo, I don't see the black caps either online. It says GP works just has coil wine while watching Netflix. And that's where I inspected my PC and noticed my GPU producing coil wine and saw this cap exposed. Now I will say that capacitors don't typically make coil wine or anything like that. So that at least to me says that there's something else going on as well, that some other component is also damaged. Now, with that said, we don't definitively know if the capacitor did pop, just, you know, the fact that we're seeing this up, looks like there might be a little bit of damage here, but essentially we don't know that for sure, but something has definitely happened. I will say that this is obviously a one-off, so I can't say that this is something anyone should be concerned about, and obviously within manufacturing, there are gonna be issues. The problem is that this really seems to be a trend with these GPUs. Like I said, there's been one issue after another. And speaking of those issues, like I mentioned, we have yet another melted connector. But the thing that's really interesting here is the fact that it's an RTX 5070. Of course, we've seen one or two 5080s, then the vast majority has been with the 5090, and that's obviously because those pull quite a bit more power, but we now have one with a 5070. With that said, I don't believe that this has really anything to do with the connector itself. Well, it does have to do with the GPU connector. Let's just kind of go over it. So it's this person on Twitter that shared this. You can see the cord is damaged right here, but then the issue, at least to me, it looks like the pin right here is either completely missing or it was bent down below right there. Can't really tell for sure from this, but clearly there's a problem and the person who reported this said that it effectively happened immediately. They basically plugged it in, turned it on, and then they got smoke. Like I said, this doesn't necessarily have to do with the power draw and these connectors themselves, though I mean, you know, one gets damaged, it completely goes up in smoke, and that obviously has to do with some of the power, but doesn't really have to do with the connector itself. This more goes along with that trend of quality control. This really does look to be a major issue with NVIDIA GPUs this time around. Now, I'm about to show you something that I actually did before I ever knew I'd be covering these stories. So it's pretty funny because, well, you'll see, Check this out. And next up, you know, the new 12E 2x6 connector has been lighting up the internet, and not in a good way. But instead of running from the flames that engulf your computer, I figured, why not embrace it? So forget RTX ray tracing, this is FTX flame tracing. We didn't just get AI frame generation with these new GPUs, but real-time fire simulation right inside your case. Luckily, this t-shirt won't set your house on fire. In fact, besides the 
soft fabric, this is what any true PC enthusiast should wear while watching their investment combust in style. It's breathable, comfy, and actually built to last. And you can get it right now at MeldStore.com. That's M-E-L-D Store.com. Or visit the link in the description below. And remember, don't let your GPU be the hottest thing in the room. Just let your new shirt do the talking. And next up for today, while I recently covered a story about benchmarks for NVIDIA's RTX 5060 Ti, that was Geekbench. And of course, that's not exactly the best way to benchmark GPUs. It's okay at showing performance, but it doesn't really give you that great of an idea. But... There is some benchmarks that, while still synthetic, they're way more focused on gaming and they definitely give us a much better idea of performance. Specifically, that is 3D Mark. And as you can see right here, Video Cards was able to get quite a bit of benchmarks for the upcoming RTX 5060 Ti from reviewers, to which it definitely does sound like this GPU is set to come in just a couple days. So if you want to be one of the first to potentially pick one up, I will have some affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Now, with that said, you likely don't want to buy NVIDIA's upcoming 5060 Ti given this performance. Of course, it's kind of hard to get just about any GPU, so if you are able to get it, probably is worth it, but once again, the 50 series is disappointing. As you can see right here, we have the 5060 Ti versus the 4060 Ti, and while yes, it's slightly better, I mean, look at time spy, it's not much of an improvement at all. And uh, yeah, so let's just kind of go over it. You can see right here, they have 3D Mark score based on the data. On average, there's a 20% increase in performance from going between the 4060 Ti. Oh, and this is the 16 gigabyte variant. Of course, there is going to be an 8 gigabyte variant, but it's comparing it to the 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes with the 5060 Ti 16 gigabytes. And like I said, we're looking at just a 20% increase. And lastly for today, we have got a bunch of new information for AMD's upcoming RX 9060 XT. I'm talking specs, performance, availability, pricing, all of that good stuff. So starting things off, let's go straight to performance. As you can see right here, this one comes from video cards. And according to them, they're actually hearing this from AMD's AIB partners. So they are likely correct. Either way, starting things off when it comes to the actual chip itself with the architecture, we're looking at RDNA 4 and it's a Navi 44 XT chip. And when it comes to cores, we're looking at 2048, which I will say is a pretty big drop from the 9070s, 3584. But there is one very interesting thing. Boost clocks apparently get all the way up to 3.2 gigahertz, which is, of course, a massive increase over the 9070 and is even faster than the 9070 XT. Moving on, we have memory, and yes, unfortunately, it does come in two variants, one with 16 gigabytes and one with eight. Then, of course, it is GDDR6 with 20 gigabits per second across a 128-bit bus. Now, Obviously, like I said, we have quite a bit more information than just specs, and that comes from a new video by Moore's Law is Dead, where you can see we are seeing similar um, specs that we just saw just a second ago. Then we're looking at uh, TDP between 150 to 200 watts, but here he also has performance. And according to him, the performance of the 9060 XT is above the 4060 Ti, but likely below the 7700 XT. Still, when it comes to performance of these, pricing is definitely where it's at. And here, it looks like AMD might be pulling something off really impressive yet again. Now, I will say that I'm still fairly disappointed, especially when I look at pretty much any 8 gigabyte SKU. I mean, 8 gigabytes seriously needs to die, especially when we're talking a 5060 Ti or 9060 XT. I mean, we have had 8 gigabytes and more mid-range SKUs for far too long at this point. But 
Regardless, it is still here. And as you can see, when it comes to pricing, according to this, this is the original plan as of a month ago. We're looking at between $269 and $299. Now, once again, that really just sucks thinking of an 8 gigabyte SKU for anywhere near $300. But don't forget that the 4060Ti, even the 8 gigabyte version, launched for $399. So this is still fairly decent, especially if we're looking at $269. Then when we move down to the 16 gigabyte SKU, according to this, we're looking at 329 to 379. And that really does not look bad just because don't forget the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte variant was coming in at 500 bucks. So 379, I don't know, it does seem like the 5060 Ti from what we've seen is going to be slightly less expensive. Although if, you know, I mean, we're talking performance above the 4060 Ti. So it does sound like this bad boy really could challenge the 5060 Ti. And even if it's like 480, I mean, that's still a hundred dollars less. But if we're talking around 329, now that is where things start looking very good when it comes to price. Moving on, as you can see right here, it says it's currently targeting a launch by 424. I don't know about that just because we really haven't heard too much about an actual release just yet. But I don't know, maybe, though they do say it's definitely launching Q2. Regardless, it might be launching soon. And with that, I may have a couple links down in the description below for if they just all of a sudden launch this without anyone really knowing. So I'll have those below. Once again, those will be affiliate links. But then they also, it seems like it might lack hardware encoders. That is a bit of a disappointment, but... I don't know, as they stated, they can't 100% confirm it. It was just mentioned by some of his sources. Still moving on, it all they also state that there's been no mention of any plans for a 9060 non-XT, which is a little bit surprising given the 9070 series, but regardless, that might be the case. Now, maybe a 9050 XT could be the reason for that. Still a little surprising there, but then we get to a couple very interesting points. As you can see here, it says the 9070 GRE is coming with 48 CUs and 12 gigabytes, plus 18.5 plus gigabit per second GDDR6. This one, I definitely think, could be a really good GPU, though of course, as always, it's very much gonna depend on price. And finally, we have the really great part, at least if you ask me, it says supply should be, quote, good. Now, you might be thinking, great, it's gonna be terrible, but according to this, it's actually better than the 9070 series launch. And don't forget that quite a bit of people actually had a chance to purchase one, though, Purchasing it at MSRP and not the more expensive variants. I mean, we're not just talking, you know, MSRP. Everything was way more expensive. It was just those variants that are more expensive tended to stay there quite a bit longer. I've obviously been over that multiple times. Still, you were able to purchase one and you had quite a while to do it. Yet, according to this, the supply is actually going to be better. Now, he does say not enough, but still... Better than the 9070 series definitely has me happy about this. Definitely makes me think that a lot of people who really, really wanted one will actually get a chance to buy one. Fingers crossed here. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's next RX 9060 XT? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the new shirt at meldstore.com. And as always, have a great day.